People love getting invertebrates for their saltwater aquariums because they can make great additions to a cleanup crew, although many people simply get them because of how cool these alien-like creatures can be. For this reason, people make impulse purchases all the time on inverts without realizing the potential consequences. Stay tuned for 5 inverts that beginners should totally avoid when first getting into the saltwater aquarium hobby. Hi, I'm George, and in this coral fish video, as requested by one of you guys, I'm going to be warning you about 5 inverts that I think beginners should totally avoid. Let's get into it. Number 1. Starfish. Starfish have an over 90% mortality rate in captive systems and will usually die anywhere within a week to a year. Now this can be because of shipping damage, but mostly because starfish react badly to changes in water quality, so you shouldn't try to introduce one to a tank that isn't stable or hasn't been running for quite some time. Do you guys know why Patrick the Starfish from Spongebob is so dumb? Is mayonnaise an instrument? No Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Horseradish is not an instrument either. Well, the reason behind that is because starfish in real life don't have brains. So what I've been taught, what I've been told, is that the reason they have such a hard time going from a tank in the store to your tank and surviving is because they can't think or understand how to adapt to the new conditions. Again, they're very sensitive to any minuscule changes in your water parameters, specifically salinity and pH. Now, if you're just dying to have a starfish as a beginner, I would stick with a serpent star. These are the hardiest and will make a great addition to a cleanup crew by eating all the leftover food that you're feeding your fish. The only challenges with these are that they can get pretty big. The green ones will sometimes go after small and slow moving fish and convincing your girlfriend or wife that these aren't creepy looking. Number two, the Harlequin Shrimp. These may be the most unique looking shrimp in the aquarium hobby. However, the issue with them is that they only eat starfish. So they're great for if you have those little Asterina pest starfish and you need to get rid of them. But once you run out of starfish, this shrimp will starve to death. If you're a beginner and you don't have a lot of starfish on hand, it's essentially a waste of money. So I would avoid them unless you want to devote a small tank to them. Number three, sea apples and sea cucumbers. Brilliant coloration makes these guys a sad target for beginners. And the issue why is because if they get stressed out and or die, they can poison your entire tank killing everything in your system. This happens if your tank parameters fluctuate too quickly or if your temperature skyrockets. It's also very common for these guys to get sucked into your overflow or powerhead intake. They'll do one of two things when they're stressed out. They'll either shrivel down or they'll blow up and inflate to the size of a basketball. Now these aren't impossible to keep, but no beginner should want the possibility of a cuke nuke in their first tank. Number four, nudibranch sea slugs. I'll always advise against the purchase of a sea slug, specifically nudibranchs, also called nudies and nudes. First, it's really hard to differentiate the good ones from the bad ones, and even under the best ideal conditions, they usually don't live past around seven months in reef aquariums. They're delicate and have very specific dietary needs. It doesn't help that there's not a whole lot of information out there for Aquarius on most types of nudibranchs. Despite the fact that there's so many beautiful types of sea slugs out there, unless you know exactly what you're getting and its specific feeding requirements, I would totally avoid sea slugs altogether. It's funny, the only ones that seem to do well are the ones that will feed off of your corals like zoanthids that will lay eggs and continuously reproduce. Trust me, the only nudes you want to get are the ones from your number five. Flame scallops. Flame scallops are really hard to feed because they're non photosynthetic, so additional feedings of plankton need to be provided. They don't always accept the food though, so the harsh reality is that most specimens starve to death in a few months of captivity. Another issue is that they can move by clapping their shells open and closed, and so oftentimes you'll find them wandering into regions of the tank that are hard to see and reach, further complicating feeding. Despite their gorgeous looks and usually modest price tag, flame scallops should be left to very dedicated expert hobbyists. Number six, and this one's gonna break your hearts, I know it is, anemones. I know everybody wants an anemone, but if you're a beginner, please wait six months to a year for your tank to establish before getting an anemone. They're maintainable with strong lighting and good water parameters, but most only live under beginner's care for a few weeks to a few months 
uh, because they're sold to unsuspecting newbies who don't really understand their full dietary needs. Anemones like to eat. The hardest ones to take care of are the carpet anemones and tube anemones, although I also want to recommend you stay away from any white looking anemones like sea bay anemones. Anemones, anemones, anemones. Sometimes they can be bleached, which makes them look especially pretty and tempting to buy, like this bleached rose bubble tip anemone. But remember, any white in anemones means they are sick. Please give this video a like if you're a beginner and you found my list helpful. Remember to follow me on my social media. The links to my Instagram and Facebook pages are linked in the description below. Also, if you have any questions at all or want me to cover a video topic in the future, let me know in the comment section below. Remember to keep those nitrates low, guys. George, out.